Good morning everyone and welcome to my aviation video. I haven't posted an aviation video for a few years now and um, it's currently 9.39 a.m. here in Sydney. I'm actually in the Bankstown Airport and I should have flown out um, around about 10 minutes ago, um, 9.30 a.m. Um, my destination airport is Shell Harbour, Wollongong. Uh, unfortunately, because of the weather here at Bankstown and the en route weather and also the destination weather, uh, it's not suitable to fly VFR. You know, we're well, not encouraged to anyway because it's low clouds, um, low visibility and gusting winds up to 25 knots. Now, I'd like to take this advantage uh, of this downtime to explain and share with you how I got into aviation in the first place. So back in the 1980s, there was a TV show called Airwolf and it's a tactical helicopter, fantasized helicopter. And that's how I got involved in um, aviation for the first time, watching that TV show. As I grew older, um, going into or selecting my university, um, when I went back to the Philippines, I went to do an exam with Airlink. Uh, passed that with flying colors. Uh, now that we're talking about colors, unfortunately, I am color vision deficient. Although it, did, it wouldn't have stopped me from taking the course, but I, it was suggested and I was encouraged to take another um, course at uni. Um, and and have, a, have it as a backup just in case I don't go through um, with an aviation career. Luckily I did that so now that I've finished uni, um, work, I now work in IT, um, I actually started pilot training when I was doing TAFE which is that, that would give me around about the late 20s so I started pilot training in the year 2004 um, with helicopters um, but for those who don't know flying a helicopter and training in a helicopter is actually more expensive um, it's actually twice as more than flying and learning how to fly a, a plane so I did my first five to six hours in the helicopter uh, I ran out of funds and I switched across to a fixed wing which is an aeroplane so I dropped the rotary wing and went for the fixed wing and I achieved my what they call back then a GFPT or even older it's an unrestricted private pilot's license and now it's currently known as an RPL which is a recreational pilot's license don't mind me I just keep looking at the tall helicopter it's an AW139 it's a helicopter so you, you'll notice I'll, every now and then I'll look at it because it's a nice 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 heli but anyway so I uh, started training in 2004, achieved my RP, now RPL in 2007. My first passenger was my dad. Um, I've held RPL since. Um, had a few breaks in between, a couple of years, you know, life gets life gets in the way, you know, your work, your family, um, you get married, you get divorced, that sort of thing. Um, I went across to what they call a Recreational Aviation Australia um, organization. And that's like the ultralight section of uh, general aviation here in Australia. So uh, I went there and did my trans transition course and got my RPC, which is also the equivalent of the RPL. So it's called a Recreational Pilot Certificate. Uh, for both the Recreational Pilot Certificate and the Recreational Pilot's License, this allows me to take out an aircraft, have passengers and fly them around my home base airport or aerodrome or point of departure uh, within 25 nautical miles so if i took off at the oaks where the rpc license where i got my rpc license i could potentially go over to wollongong and over the over the beach and back go to warragamba dam um, even as far as katoomba the blue mountains now with the rpl because where i'm based in bankstown I could actually fly up to to the coast, fly to the east, um, do a harbour, what they call a Victor One um, Harbour Scenic. So I could fly down the coast, you could see the Harbour Bridge and the, and the Centre Point Tower, the Opera House from, from the coast, and then just fly back in inland and, and uh, track to Bankstown. Um, so that's how I got started. Now, at the moment, 
um, well, fly is expensive. So now I've, what I've done to sort of um, relieve me of uh, cash flow in terms of uh, getting my license, my full license or my, my uh, end goal of a flight instructor is I went through the government's vet fee. So what, what's happening now is that the government's paying for my flight training. Um, once I've completed that, they will then take away funds from my income wherever I work. If I, if I meet a certain threshold. So uh, I do have to pay that money back um, after I get a decent job or um, they'll actually just take it away of my current income at the moment, um, bit by bit. The downfall to that is at the moment, I will be paying 20% interest on that uh, amount, whatever it is. So if, if it takes me $100,000 to get my license, then I'll pay an extra 20 grand on top just to have that privilege of having to use the vet fee and no cash up up front, up front. So there you go. So that's that pretty much rounds how I got into aviation, what triggered it and where I'm at. Um, but just to recap, it's now the year 2020. I have a total of 100, or I'm at 125 aeronautical experience, um, 105 of the, oh, let me see, around about 100 and 110, 105 of those is on fixed wing and around about 15 and all the rest is on rotary. So there you go. Um, hopefully that's been informative in or gave you a better understanding where I'm coming from as, as, as far as flying in my lifestyle is concerned. So I work IT, I've got two kids, I've got a partner, I've got a stepson, uh, I've got a baby on the way, um, starting from scratch, uh, we're a blended family. So I've got to juggle all these things, uh, work in IT, I, I have um, I help in the community, uh, I've got a business to run, and on top of that I've got to study for for my flight training as well. So. Hopefully tomorrow we'll go flying and hopefully we'll have some videos from there. Thank you for watching. Okay, I managed to leave out a very important thing that I wanted to mention. It's all about the color vision deficiency that I have. So what I have is actually a very uh, moderate or bad case actually of color vision deficient. It is that bad that the Aviation Authority here in Australia, which is CASA, have only granted me a class one medical with a restriction of day VFR flying only. So that means I can only fly during the daytime, never the nighttime. And if it's during the day, it has to be good weather, not like today. So today's, you know, still VFR um, with at the minimums, but if it goes into IMC, you are required to fly IFR or you'll be in IFR conditions. I won't be legal um, so I'll be flying illegally basically but during the day VFR or even your pilot training you are trained to use the instrument so if I if I ever get into trouble where I fly into cloud or into bad weather for some reason that the forecast didn't show it and I'm flying up in the air um, I will be able to fly the aircraft based on the based on the instruments so we are trained to do that but legally I'm not allowed to fly uh, into it at all so there you go. So for those who are color vision deficient, don't lose hope. Um, although it's taken me, you know, more than a decade to actually progress on to class one. So I only got my class one medical last year. Um, ever since 2004, I've only had my class two, which is only up to a PPL level. And now because I have class one, I can go up to my commercial pilot's license. And my aim is to be a flight instructor. So there you have it, don't lose hope and see you next time.